Okay. I, I say we get started on kind of the, just the intro logistics, and that'll give people a few more minutes to log in um, so that uh, they can hopefully join for the meat of the presentation. Um, but I did want to take a second to introduce uh, uh, myself and Silicon Valley at home, for those of you who may not be familiar with who we are and what we're doing. Uh, my name is Rick Lasalvis. I work on housing production and policy. And so at the end of the day, uh, I really work with developers and cities to advocate for housing, especially affordable housing. Uh, we love to see housing get built and we love to see people uh, have opportunity with a mix of, of products available in the market. Um, Silicon Valley at Home is a members organization, and so we certainly invite you to not only join uh, the many events that we have going on this month for Affordable Housing Month, but also to become a member. Uh, this month, the Affordable Housing Month theme is Silicon Valley is Home, and so we invite you to go to siliconvalleyathome.org and click on the calendar and sign up for any event that you feel um, is of interest. Uh, they're all free and they're packed with great information and great content. And so we welcome you to go to siliconvalleyathome.org and sign up uh, for any event that you are interested in. Um, with that, I would like to introduce today's speaker, Jared Ferguson with the City of San Jose. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Jared, he oversees the Housing Catalyst team uh, who are working to implement the city's housing crisis work plan and they're building a lot of new tools and uh, we get to have a sneak peek today. So with that, Jared, why don't I hand it over to you and it's, uh, it's a good time to get started. Thanks, Rick, and um, thank uh, you to SV at Home too for, for hosting uh, this event today. Um, so we've uh, recently launched uh, what we're calling San Jose Housing Site Explorer. Um, its primary purpose is to help uh, in finding sites suitable for housing development. Um, so it's primarily a web-based tool. So I'm gonna share my screen here, um, one second. Okay. So um, it's a web-based tool uh, best viewed in uh, the Chrome browser. Um, so, to put this tool together, what we've done is we've combined a, a wide variety of data sources from the city and other public agencies all into one place. Um, the goal being, as I said, to try to you know help best identify sites suitable for housing development that could either be you know for affordable housing or for market rate housing. Um, so it really lets you um, kind of slice the data in a lot of ways to to look up property. So I'm going to walk through a few ways in which you, you might be able to, to uh, use it um, and some different applications. Um, so kind of broadly, there's this, this uh, function, like I mentioned, in terms of filtering and looking for uh, a number of different properties that meet your, your different criteria and filters. Um, and then each, each parcel in the city has its own detailed uh, parcel page that has a lot of different information and we, we'll go through that as well. Um, so I know it can seem a little bit overwhelming when you're kind of presented with it, but you know it, it has a lot of different information and, and just wanna reassure you that it is very you know uh, usable once you kind of get into it and, and, and get to clicking, it's, it's sort of, uh, it, it is intuitive. Um, so, yeah, and a lot of a lot of information can be answered uh, here as well. So, just kind of what we're looking at when you log in. Um, so, the base layer that's applied here, what you're looking at is every parcel in the city. So, uh, two thousand two hundred thousand and four four uh, sorry two hundred forty nine thousand properties. The base layer here is uh, the general plan. So that that's what you're looking at. Um, so, and then just to kind of orient yourself with the, the tools. So on the right, um, you know, there's zoom in, zoom out. Um, you can also um, draw a polygon. So if there's a certain, and as we get into the filters, this will make more sense, but you can kind of draw an area specifically that you want to look at if it's not the full city. Um, you can also change the, um, the base uh, map. So if you wanted to look at a satellite image, if you wanted to turn off the, 
uh, uh, points and polygons, you can do that as well. It, it loads in this, this points version, but as you zoom in, uh, those will turn into polygons um, to show you the actual parcel outline. The points just sort of save. Uh, it's a lot like of data to load, so watching it. It, it saves um, saves uh, loading the data. So anyway, so let me run you through a um, run you through a couple of different scenarios uh, just on how you can use the filters. So we start over here. There's an add filters button. Um, that will bring up a, a pop out a slide out that has uh, all the different filters kind of grouped in in various areas that that sort of describe what what data you're you're looking at. So um, let's do kind of a simple simple search. So um, we can go to property attributes. So let's say we want to look for properties over one acre in size. So uh, we can slide that out, and then you know there's a variety of different um, types here. So land size. So we click down um, and then we can say one acre. Um, and then if we hit enter, um, that's gonna start to load. And then you'll see the number of properties change in the right upper right hand screen. So there's 9,295 properties that meet that, meet that criteria. So let's add a few, let's add some more, um, add some more filters on. So um, in the overlays, we have, uh, let's look at properties in urban villages or growth areas. Uh, that's primarily where we wanna see development in the city. Um, so we're looking at properties over an acre and then we wanna look at all properties in urban villages or growth areas. Um, so I can select that and it's gonna load all properties that meet that criteria. So now we're down to around 3,600 properties. Um, another thing to, to point out, you can also, this little uh, eyeball here with a line through it, that means it's not being displayed. I can toggle this on to also show the overlay itself. So now that will show me, you can see it load in the background, the outlines of the actual boundaries of the urban villages as well. Um, and if you can't, you know, if you're, you can look by category, you can also search by filter. So if we wanted to find, if we we're looking for urban villages, I can search for urban village here and it will, um, show all filters that meet, uh, you know, well, it's urban, so it's urban village. And so is it in urban village or growth area? And then overlay, here's the one that's, that's been applied. So you can also search for filters as well. So there's also a cool uh, ability to uh, use these spatial tools. So I can also say, um, let's look for a, a distance to a point of interest. So um, let's say light rail stops. So, and let's say 1000 feet from a light rail station. So I can type in a thousand and hit enter. And it's gonna load properties within a thousand feet that also meet the other criteria that we've identified. So now we've got about 1200 properties. Um, and I'm gonna minimize this here. And now at the top of the screen here, you also see these are all the filters that are currently applied. Um, and you can hover over it if you wanna make changes to them. Um, and uh, so if we wanted to, maybe we just want, uh, we just want urban villages. We don't want these other, you know, uh, plan areas. I can uncheck those and that will change and it will start loading. So now we have a little bit less, uh, 161 properties. And you can see those, those points on the map as well. Um, so let's go back and add those back in now. Um, and now if I wanted to uh, zoom in, I can look at these areas. So let's see, this is over in Southwest Expressway, it looks like. So I can zoom in and um, look at the, look more closely at the properties that it's found. Um, and I can click on an individual parcel as well, and it will load the address and give me the APN number. Um, and then if I click, on this here, it will load the parcel page. So I'll show you one of those later, but I just wanted to kind of go through an overview of how you could filter through. Now you can view the data you found as a map, or you can also go down here and you can view a list of the properties. So um, this is useful uh, as well if you wanted to um, maybe just kind of get a list of addresses. Um, you can also add to this data as well. So um, or remove columns um, if you want to. 
So maybe there's something else that you, you know, you want to drill down into. So maybe you, uh, let's see, we can add a column so we can look at building attributes. So why don't we look at how big the existing building is on the site that we're looking at. So I can add that column, click save, and it will, it will load. And then you can also export this data. Uh, so if you, if you find a set that you, you, uh, it's good, you know, you can, uh, ex export it as a spreadsheet, uh, download it as a shape file. Um, and so, so this is kind of a, a view of every, every property that met the, that criteria, the 1200 properties, uh, that's up, up over here. So, and I can click down here and go back to the map. Okay. So, and then I can, once I've, if I'm done with what I've, what I'm doing, I can always click here and reset and that will remove everything that I've applied. So I'm going to click that right now. So that will reset and that will load everything again back to the base layer with the general plan designation and the 249,000 properties. So now the next thing I wanted to show, so what we've been doing as well, uh, we've been adding um, into this section we're calling developer shortcuts. Um, so we have a couple of things in here now and we're, we're planning to add more. Um, so one, just to highlight, um, we've made it easy to find properties that are eligible for our policy H-2.9, uh, H which is known as our 1.5 acre rule. This allows for affordable housing, 100% affordable housing projects on commercial properties that are outside of urban villages. And so, um, this filter will pull up properties that generally meet that criteria. So here I've clicked yes under here, and now it will show me the number 242 properties. And then, so I can minimize this and now I can look. And so you can zoom in and out and kind of pan across the city, or I can drill down in and look at a specific property. So let's go in and look at these here. Um, so 910 Meridian Avenue, and I can click this link here. And it's gonna load a parcel page. You get a lot of information, useful information on this page as well. So it's gonna show me the parcel um, in context. Um, I can click here and view a street view. It will show me other addresses associated with the parcel. Um, you have a variety of different categories of data. So in the property attributes, we have the general plan designation, the land size. Uh, we recently added this where it shows uh, parks within a 10 minute walk of the site. Uh, it'll show you the current attributes of the building. So uh, in this case, there was a one, one building with 1800 square feet. Um, and then there's a lot of other locational information, what council district, the school district, the census block, uh, zoning. Um, we have also, we also have the uh, urban displacement risk data um, in here, the planning area and inclusionary housing ordinance area. Um, and then every uh, parcel also, uh, we've linked all of our planning and building data as well. So you can see where um, planning and building permits uh, that were associated with the parcel here as well. And if you click this link here, it will actually take you to the SJ permits file for that specific um, project. So you can try to pull up documents and look at the project description. Um, so again, it shows planning and, and building permit information. So every property in the city has um, this uh, parcel page associated with it. So um, this is also just very useful in and of itself to kind of, if you're looking at a particular site to, to find some information. Um, so let me go back here. And it's easy to just also, if you have a site, a specific site in mind you wanna look at, you can type in the search here. So let's go to, Type in that, start typing the address um, and it will start looking for the street. So here's what I'm looking for. Now I can, I can click here right away and load the individual parcel page. 
or I can click here on this little pin and it will take me to the location of that site and show you the surrounding context. So I've looked at 266 Sonol Street. Um, so it's uh, just on kind of Sonol and West San Carlos. So I can look at it in the context and um, I can click the link and pull up a parcel page. So again, it's going to load the information. It shows me the other um, addresses associated with it. And then something I um, wanted to highlight too. So this is something we've added recently as well. Um, all parcels in the city should have this descriptor with it here. Um, and so it, it's generally giving you information about whether or not housing is allowed on the site that you're looking at. So in this case, this site has a general plan designation of urban residential. So housing is allowed with this designation, and then it gives you the housing density that's permitted, which is between 30 dwelling units per acre and a maximum of 95 dwelling units per acre. Um, so that's a feature that um, we're, we're still working on, but I think is, is fairly useful. Uh, it's a common question we get about you know, whether or not uh, housing can be developed on a, on a specific site. Um, so again, this is similar to the other one we looked at, you know, you get, you get a lot of information, the current zoning, the council district, um, and then also other data down here, with the planning and building permits. Um, you know, there's other useful information about sites, whether or not they have affordable housing units, you can look up uh, whether or not there are rent controlled units, um, pulling data from our, our housing, um, housing department as well. So, um, you know, we're pretty excited about this tool and think it can be really useful in terms of um, identifying potential sites for, you know, identifying sites for, for housing development. Uh, we're gonna be working to, um, you know, add more data to this site. Uh, we'll be looking to add our housing um, as, uh, it, the city council will be considering our um, housing siting policy uh, soon. And so that's that's a, a data layer we'll be looking to add to this. Um, and also, as I mentioned, the, those developer shortcuts, we're looking at adding some, some new uh, shortcuts there as well, um, kind of possibly around some of our other general plan policies around affordable housing um, as well. So, um, Again, you know, there, there's a lot of potential, um, you know, opportunities, uses for this tool, a lot of different ways that you can slice and apply the data to different parcels to, to come up with a list of properties. Um, and so we, we, we think it can be really useful. And, you know, I think we're also looking really to get some feedback um, to see, you know, kind of what's missing or what are things that maybe we haven't thought of that would be useful here? So I'm also really interested to hear some, some feedback as well. Um, so I, I probably went too fast, so I'm, I'm sorry if I did. I'm happy to uh, go back through some things if, if that, that's helpful as well. But um, I just wanted to give kind of a brief overview and then kind of um, leave more time for, for questions and comments and, and answers and that sort of thing. So with that. Wow, thanks, Jared. Uh, I think that uh, the tool, having come from technology, I recognize how complicated this tool is. Uh, it looks like you tie in a significant number of systems and centralize it in one place, and they all interact together. Um, that's a that's a very very fancy tool. Um, one of the things that uh, came to mind, so I'll just get the ball rolling. Um, you know, if, if I were a consistent user of this tool, uh, I see a login feature. Is that for staff or is that for the public? Right now, it's just for, for staff. Um, almost all the, the, the data that we, we push out to the, the public side. So um, right now, it's just an internal internal login for, for testing. OK, so, uh, so if a user does a search um, and they left the system and came back, they would have to recreate the search uh, right now. Yeah, that's right. Right now, um, that that's how it would, would work. Um, they, you know, you could use the if you if you 
found a set of properties that you really want to hang on to, you could use that export feature to pull pull out a spreadsheet or a shape file to, to save, you know, save that list of properties and as well as a lot of the data in the spreadsheet as well. So. Okay, great. And then, um, you know, as, as you're releasing more and more developer shortcut tools, um, as you mentioned, some of the policies uh, analysis kind of right at the fingertips, one click, um, is that, is that going to be announced and how would developers know that those new tools are available? Yeah, that's a great question. So we're, we're looking to start kind of a, a landing page for this tool. Um, uh, now um, on our Office of Economic Development webpage. And so we would we would plan to post, um, you know, updates to that page and also push out updates through um, our, our newsletters, through the housing department, as well as the Office of Economic Development. So, um, and then I, I should mention, you know, if there's specific data that you want to see included, anyone can feel free to email me directly. And you know, if there's other questions I can answer at any time or walk you through things, I'm happy to do that as well. I'll make sure to put my put my email in the chat box. Um, so happy to take any kind of requests of, of things that you know people might might feel are, are useful to add. You know, beyond just this event. So we're we want we want this to be you know a very active tool. We're not like, hey, this is you know we're we've we've got it. We're done. We're not going to you know keep iterating on it. We our intention is to, to keep working on it, to keep improving it and adding, you know, things that, that can be beneficial. So, and then I look like, I, I think I got a, a question here in the chat about ADU, ADU permits. That's a good question. We're, we're actually working on that right now to include that. That's one thing that's came through about just being able to kind of view and search ADU permits. So we're, we're working right now on that. So I think, I would say within a within a month, month and a half, we, we should have that as as a filter to kind of look at um, and search ADU permits. So, great. And you know, if anybody has a question, uh, you know, you can chat it through the chat, or you can just unmute yourself and uh, and ask Jared directly. Hi, hi, Jared. Can you hear me? This is Steve Pratt with EAH. Yeah. Hi. Just, just had a question. If there's a layer on uh, TCAC um, high and highest resource areas, that's kind of a focus yeah, we'll, area for. Yeah, we're working on adding on adding that. Um, that's a good, great question. Um, yeah, that's something we want to get included, definitely. So, like I mentioned, we had that testing side. We have that as one of the the things that we're going to add soon. So. Okay, it looks like Amanda actually sent a, a question as well. And it says, will there be a way to sort parcels with affordable units by AMI? Um, that's a good question. I don't think we don't have that yet. Um, if that's something that's of use, we could we could look into that. Um, but right now we just have whether or not they're affordable units, not by affordability. So I can take that feedback. Right. One of the things I was curious, I'll, I'll ask this, is, is there a way to layer on, for example, like if you do an affordable site search, um, recent uh, permits or developments so that you can kind of see geospatially or spatially um, if you're looking at a site, if it was developed recently? Yeah, so we have, there's a couple ways you could get at that. Um, so let me just zoom out here a little bit and I can show you. So um, so there's, um, oops, sorry, wrong one. So you can look by, if you wanted to look at recent um, building permits, you could look, um, and that would be a way to show what's recently, you know, kind of come under construction. So, you know, you could look in the last, you know, say, 24 months, if they've had, you know, five or more units, you could um, sort by that. Whoops, between one and that's gonna do a lot. Sorry, it's a little slow right now. Um, so five or more units in the last two years. Um, and that will show every property that's had five or more units get a building permit in the, in the last uh, two years. 
Um, and then there's also this other filter called major development projects. That's kind of a, a curated list of, of high profile projects in the city. So you can um, toggle that view on as well to view uh, major projects. Um, that's uh, a list generated by our Office of Economic Development. Um, it's, it's updated regularly. So that's under the permits. So you can click that. So and we'll show you major projects as well. So, oops. Probably a better way to do that. Just... So, okay. Um, I guess it should be one, not zero. So, something we could fix. Great, great. Yeah, very cool. Um, do, they, do people have questions? Uh, feel free to unmute, Say, send chat, tell Jared his playground looks really exciting in the background. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, this is a conversation opportunity to connect with the city and they certainly want to hear from you or if, uh, if there are no further questions, um, uh, we can give you about a half an hour of your day back. Um, I put one in the chat. This is Joel with the mayor's office. Just curious, Jared, if you can walk through how, how to locate a kind of mixed use retail residential project. Okay, like a one that's currently entitled, currently that got a building permit yeah. recently. Yeah, or... maybe building permit. Yeah, just just the various ways that one would locate that information relatively easily. Okay, um, I think there's a couple different ways you could go about that. So. Um, so mixed use project. So, um, you could look by general plan designation. Um, so we could probably look for, um, one that's got a general plan designation of urban village. So that's the mixed use designation that we have. Um, and then we could look at uh, building permit status. So um, and you could look at a time period. So in the last two years, we'll say, um, it's been approved for one unit or more. Uh, so let's see here. So we've got 10, 10 properties that came up with that search and then I can look through a list as well, so. There could be other mixed use, I guess, if you wanted to expand it on based on uh, general plan designation, um, but. Yeah, and the reason why I ask obviously is, is if someone is looking for, let's say a TCAC um, compatible spot in an urban village, there's a commercial requirement. They can see nearby successful mixed use retail uh, residential mm -hmm. buildings and, and be able to kind of locate something in a successful kind of mixed use neighborhood. I guess that's maybe you know, where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right, great. Um, it sounds like a, it looks like a really fantastic tool. Um, and I, I'm sure the staff is enjoying uh, developing it. Um, if there are no more questions from the developers of the audience, um, we can, we can, uh, give you your day back, but please unmute yourself or, or send questions in the chat. We Now's a great time to have that discussion and share your thoughts. Um, so we'll give everyone a couple more minutes and, and uh, ask away. Yeah, and just like I said, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. I put my email in, in the chat, you know, feel free to contact me directly if later, you know, there's there's maybe a question you have or an issue or something you'd like to see added or you know you thought think of something later or or you know it's always great also if you have a particular use scenario too that you're like maybe oh this is what this is how I was trying to use it and I, I couldn't or I did you know the success stories are good too but um, you know uh, feel free to contact me please um, we really are wanting the feedback and wanting to this to be a, a helpful and useful tool for you um, as well. I have a question. Um, well, a couple questions. So, is this live? Can we go use this after? 
Yes. Yeah. I'll make sure I'll put the link right now in the chat. So you have it. Uh, it is cool. public here and yeah, please go play around with it. It's always maybe easier once you've had time to have the hands on. Um, so there, there's the link um, and it's, it's live. Great. Yeah, that's really, it's a really good tool. It looks like um, uh, another question. Does this correlate at all with the NOFA um, regions that they're going to be uh, funding or is this a totally separate deal? Um, this is, this is separate, but we're, um, so that, I think you're, you're talking about the, the siting policy that we're right. working on. We're going to, we're going to integrate that data into here. So, you know, it's an opportunity to kind of layer that on as you're looking at sites to be able to identify it. So yeah, we, w once that, um, the, uh, if the policy is approved, then we're going to be putting that, that data in, um, for, for the areas that have been identified through that. So definitely. Cool. Thanks. Jared, I see a question in the chat from Marie. Uh, does San Jose Explorer, uh, for ease of use, have United Credit Check, background check, rental application used uh, for selected properties? Um, we haven't integrated that data since this is primarily around having, um, you know, identifying sites for new, you know, new construction opportunities for, for development. Um, so that that's not data we've looked to include um, so, so far. So that would be something that our, um, our, our housing department is, is working on a, um, a portal for, for housing, uh, affordable housing, um, searching for units. So I think that that would be more kind of in their, in their area um, that would look for, for uh, data like that. Okay, great. What are you looking forward to the most with this tool? I just wanted, I just hope that, you know, it's like, hey, I've, I, we can, we can, you know, help, help identify some sites for, for new units to be built and that, you know, we're, we're really, you know, uh, providing a value add for, for people to kind of, you know, make things as streamlined as possible from, from, from the city's end. So that, that's really what I'm looking forward to and, and hopeful for, so. Great. Well, this has been really great. And um, certainly, if you have a question, throw it in the chat. But it, but it seems like a, a number of questions have been asked and answered. And so um, we want to um, certainly uh, welcome you to ask those questions. Jared provided contact information. And we, and we do invite you to sign up for other Affordable Housing Month events. We have a whole host of events on Silicon Valley at home.org under the calendar. Um, please take a peek and sign up and uh, join us for other events where we'll have a lot of conversation about bringing housing to the, to the Bay Area, the South Bay and San Jose in particular. Um, with that, Jared, I, I think that uh, we could probably wind up if, it, if people don't have any more questions. Uh, now, now's your chance to raise your hand or unmute and, and ask away. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks again, Rick. Thanks uh, for, for help, helping host this. This was, this was great. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Go explore the site online and, uh, and, you know, play with it, break it and let Jared know how they can make it better. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks guys.